This is Jacob with JD Photography, and you are experiencing the very first episode of Sparking Fire, the podcast for innovative artists and entrepreneurs. I have with me today as a guest, Julie Johnson with Piper Vine. Yes. Hi. Nice to be here. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, We're going to be talking about wedding photography and the wedding industry, so you you guys are in for a really good treat today. So, no um, pressure, no pressure. <laughs> so Julie, tell me about Piper Vine Photography. So Piper Vine, the name itself, it kind of came about because, you know, it was always my first and last name and things like that. And I was like, you know, I think I want to more come up with a brand. So I came up with the name Piper because it was very peppy, bubbly, kind of like my, I felt like it was my personality. And then Vine came from um, John 15, 5, I'm the vine, you're the branches. I'm at the very end, it says, apart from you, you can do nothing. I was like, okay, I'm going to use that as like a platform too, to be like, you know, again, without the Lord really working in my career, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, you know, nine plus years later. So that's Piper Vine uh, in a nutshell. That's where the name came from. It's not my first and last name, which I was like, I'm going to try to build something. And like, it's been, it's been great for about three years. I've been Piper Vine though. So, yeah, before that I was, you know, Julie, and then I was in a partnership, but Piper Vine came from, okay, it's going to be a brand, not just name, because the name can change, but a brand I can really build on and get associates or, you know, I use it for calligraphy work, work too. So it kind of like can become more than just a photography, if that, that makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's really interesting, because like, tell me about the partnership aspect, because like, you're, you're an yeah. sole proprietor right now. Yes. Like, like you, I mean, you, run the, you run a business by yourself now. For sure. But how did you start out in the industry? Did you have a partner at first? Um, so I actually started sole proprietorship, still starting out, and then um, a friend of mine and I, we would uh, shoot weddings together all the time, mm-hmm. and so we were like, hey, why don't we just merge and become, you know, a partnership? And that worked out for a really long time it was like probably three years for that one too and it was good but um my friend she wanted to go do um art teacher like she was in grad school and wanted to go be an art teacher and I still wanted to continue to pursue wedding photography so we dissolved it and at that point I was kind of at a crossroads being like okay do I go back to first and last name sole proprietor stuff or do I go continue with like branding like a name and so I was like well I'm just going to keep going with a name like a brand name that way I can expand on that you know, add a partner, add associates. Like I said, I do photo- I do photography and calligraphy, so I can be like, well, Piper Vine can be all inclusive for my for my other art forms like calligraphy. If I ever want to do watercolor, just I'm not like the most you know I'm not like over here being all the time painting, drawing. I was like, but if I ever wanted to do other artistic outlets, I can use it as like more more of a brand, a soul brand. Does that make sense? So yeah. I yeah. Get that. Let's kind of walk it back a little bit. Yeah. So how did you start out in photography? So I feel like I started like most everybody. Um, you know, you you pick up a camera and you're like, oh, I'm just going to take pictures for like my friends. Or I really enjoy like taking photos of flowers or the grass or just, you know, landscapes and things like that. But it's funny. So I really wanted one of the cameras. So I really love Christmas, right? And so I was always like, whenever I drive by, you know, the little Boy Scout um, lots that they have. Uh, I was always like, man, I'd love to just go by there and just like take pictures of like Christmas trees at night with like all the twinkly lights. And I thought, well, I need a camera that's really good in low light. And so my origin story is basically me being like, I want a nice camera so I can take pictures of Christmas trees. (laughs) It was never about like weddings or people or, you know, anything like that. It was always like, well, I think I'd like a a nice camera to take pictures of like the, the tree at Christmas time and have the you know, the blur in the background as I knew, knew at that time. Mm-hmm. But that bokeh, I was like, I want something that, that I knew. I was like, I need something that has low light. And maybe one of those, like, lenses I can change in and out. So I was never really about, like I said, people or things. And eventually friends started kind of getting um, interested in what I was doing. And they'd be like, hey, can you come take pictures of me, my family, engagement, turn to wedding, turn to, okay, this is going really well. People are really enjoying my work, so I'm gonna keep going where these doors are opening, and here I am, you know, yeah. a few years later. So and that's yeah. actually a really common story. Like all my friends who are photographers, yeah. it started out as like, as like a hobby. Absolutely. And for me, it, it, it was something that I didn't discover until I was like 25. Yeah. But it just kind of like started as a, started it started out as something that you really love. Yeah. And then people start asking you to take pictures. And right. And then you're like, hey, yeah. what do I what do I owe you? And you're like, um. 
hugs um starbucks like i don't know like it's i'm not really into it about that yet but then they're like no no let us pay you for your time let us pay you for your talent and your your ability and you you know you have these cameras and Mm -hmm. we ask you to be here and it's your time so i was like okay i literally googled my first wedding what to charge for a wedding (laughs) i was like i don't even know and i think you know not that it's important now but i think i charge like maybe five hundred dollars for my first wedding and it was a blast it was a great friend of mine from high school and you know, I know we're going to talk later about like marketing stuff, but truly word of mouth was like my biggest marketing tool. And it just, like I said, you know, skyrocketed from just friends being so supportive of everything I was doing. So, well, like how it starts is like so pure because like, yeah. you know, it's just so funny because I, I, I kind of had the same response too. like people ask me like, how much do you charge? And I'm like, it never occurred to ask. I know, I know. Or it'd be like, this is just truly a passion of mine. I'm just really enjoying what I'm doing right now. Thank you for letting me explore my camera and my options of, you know, what, what, and what can be different in front of my lens versus, like I said, grass and flowers and, you know, my, my pets, you know, that's pretty much where I started. So, and then Christmas trees, cause they just stand there and just, they just sit there and look pretty. So I was like, okay, I'll take pictures of the Christmas exactly. tree. So, yeah. So you kind of touched on like, you know, people started asking you to like take pictures for like family events yeah. or portraits. So talk to me about how your business developed and, and started. <sighs> I'm like, do I have, did I write that stuff down? Um, Really, like I said, it just kind of like, word of mouth kind of kept going. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to keep doing this, I need to, you know, get my legal stuff in order. And so I went, you know, to a a CPA and who did all my taxes and stuff and registered me as an LLC or you could do sole proprietor or whatever. But I was like, well, I need to be protected. I don't want to. I want to do things right, so I went and did that, and then, you know, from there, it just was, once again, I was like, okay, I'm going to continue to just word of mouth, you know, post on Facebook all the time, post on any social media platform. Obviously, Instagram is like a huge thing for us now, as we're, you know, as we are all aware of, but um, I just would constantly post anything, and any of my friends would just, like, repost, and so it just became this thing where it's like, okay, I shoot, I shoot people now I shoot weddings and, and again like it's hard to get it's hard to make I say make money but like when you realize okay this is now going to be like something I'm pursuing yeah. because this is paying the bills now <laughs> this is great um it's like I can't just do landscapes and I can't just do you know I can do fun things and do personal work which I want to touch on too later with yeah. style shoots and stuff but like I can't just do things for fun anymore and so like your hobby became like your career which I love so one of my friends he was like so what do you do on your off days now like it's like photography was like my day on my, my off days when I was like in college and stuff I was like I just go out and take photos so now on my off days I like play with my dogs or I go do scuba diving or I do you know other things but like other expensive hobbies <laughs> you know what I mean but like literally I was like okay now my hobby became my career and so you don't really work a day in your life it's just it's just a lot of fun, you know. So and I can I, I can actually vouch for the uh, the idea that you know when your hobby stops being your hobby, you rarely go back to what you were doing before. Like yeah. I was in um, uh, Las Vegas like three weeks ago at a place called um, the Valley of Fire National Park, uh-huh. and I was there you know strictly to take photos for my clients. But I took some some landscape photos which I hadn't done in years, yeah. and like honestly, that was like the first like personal photos I had taken in like a, a really yeah. long time. Yeah, and it feels time. good. You're like, man, this is like reigniting my like excitement and passion and fire for something that started truly as just like you said something you just did to create art and just to feel connected to nature connected to you know an, an art form and um again when I, when I couldn't so I was a biology major actually in, in college and so for me photography was an artistic outlet to all the books and the and the math and this and I was like I just need something I was like I can't paint I can't draw can't really sing so what can I do well I can I can take a nice photo so like it became my truly like escape outlet to use the right side of my brain when I'm using the left side constantly to study and do things like that like I said that's why it's funny because like here I was going to go do this career path of you know science and stuff and now I'm like completely opposite side of my brain now and so it's just so freeing and great I really yeah well here's a question for you funny did you ever consider yourself as an artist before you started photography my parents will say that I was, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I don't, I always was like very into the science and stuff, but I still loved 
I still loved art and painting and drawing. I mean, I wasn't very, I don't want to say like I wasn't good at it, but I wasn't like in AP art or like in the higher, you know, I didn't go take like tons of art history or things like that in college. Mm-hmm. I, even though I had passions for it, I just wasn't like, oh, that's going to like be something I need to like pursue to make, you know, yeah. to make money. And it sounds so sad, but. Um, so it was, a, it was like a surprise. It was a surprise for me. I've always been drawn to art and things. And like all of my teachers who were like my drama teachers, my art teachers were like very encouraging and said I did well, but I still was like, yeah, but I gotta, I gotta go do the science thing. Cause that's like what you're just gotta do. But I never really explored it until like I was in a hard, like not hard place, but like in a place where I was like, had to escape from all the, the math and the science. And like I said, the, the studying the books, I was like, I need something to like make me feel alive and ignited again. And, and like, a passionate way, not just like a have to kind of way, right. if that makes sense. How old were you when you realized that? I think I was, I was like 20, 2021, 20, something like that. Um, Cause I graduated in, um, when I was 22 and I, my first wedding I shot was in 2011, the mm-hmm. year I graduated 20, but like I was shooting and taking photos for friends all through even high school and college, but like never really picked up a good camera. Yeah. My Nikon D60, the like lowest, like one grade below the lowest yeah. <laughs> um, until I was like 20, 21. Mm-hmm. And then again, that even that was came from eBay. It was like, Hey, um, can I get this nice camera from eBay for, <laughs> for like, you know, just to take pictures of my friends and stuff and get a cool lens that gives me that blur, as I used to say before I knew the words, the but fuzzy the fuzzy background. <laughs> and now and I'd learned about the Nifty 50 and I was like, oh, OK, this is what I need. This is now what I needed for everything. So yeah. it just like I said, it just kind of grew out of a place of wanting to express myself when, you know, I'm at home doing outside of the book stuff. I just wanted to go and do free art. Just be free. Just be a free spirit. So. Yeah, well, the, the reason I mention that is a, a lot of people in our modern times feel that, you know, that they're kind of like stuck on a certain career path. Mm-hmm. And they feel that if they pivot away from there, that there's going to be loss and they have yeah. no idea what to do. So a lot of people have pursued careers as like doctors and yeah. lawyers. And they're very successful and rich, but they're miserable at the same time. Sure, sure. And so there's always that that kind of like, you know, what if situation like, you know, what if I picked up a paintbrush or did something different? Yeah, I know, for sure. So, so the fact that you got to experience that and like, you know. At a pivotal moment where literally like, I mean, I was at a point where I was like, do I go to med school? Yeah. Do I keep pursuing this? And like, it's funny because I was actually working at a clinic at the time and a door closed at that clinic. And like, again, in the meantime, people are still asking me and, you know, willing to pay me for my photography. And I was like, okay, again, Lord, like I hear which like literally door after door after door closed after for like the science stuff and like research jobs and things like that with my degree. And I was like, kind of freaking out, like you said, but I was like, but at the same time, this has always been a passion of mine and it was paying bills and I was like all right I'm gonna go now in this direction that the doors are opening and he's shown favor in all these doors that have opened in the and the things that I'm passionate about and that weren't like a scary thing to pursue it was more of a fun and and a cool thing to, to do versus just like have to do you know so exactly. yeah yeah. And I really love that. Um, I think it get, like stories like that give people hope. Yeah. That you know that you're not really like locked into your life, and that if For you sure. really want to do something and you enjoy it, it's it's, it's totally possible. For to sure, that. absolutely, I hundred percent agree with that. Uh, so where do you think you are now as a photographer? Um, where am I now? I am fulfilled. I am happy that I get to be with people. You know, being in the on. The wedding spectrum, I get to be with people on the happiest day of their life. You know, very crazy and hectic day. Um, it goes by quickly, but I get to be with them and just make them feel so loved and cared for and just, like, let them feel like, okay, I trust her. She's She's got me. She's not going to, like, lead me astray. And, you know, because I need, so, like, I mean, me being me, I just, I'm a very like encouraging and like uplifting person. And like, I think people need a little bit of that do on their wedding day, like that therapist kind of person too. So I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm so fulfilled, so excited every day I go into work and it's not even work because I, you know, I love it. Um, but I really do love getting to be with people on a happy day and a day that like they will remember not only how the photos look, but how they felt. Like my main goal is to make people feel loved and cared for and have those authentic moments and genuine things that happen because when you look at a photograph you should feel something about 
you know, whether it was good, bad, should always be good on your wedding day. So I'm like, I'm always get, I'm always going to have like a little bit of a, a stamp on that to be like, I made people feel like really loved that day on top of the fact that they were already, you know, so happy. I'm just, I just added to that. So it's been, it's, it's really a good, good career. I think that totally makes a difference in any picture. Yeah. Cause like, you know, there's the base of image quality and that's kind of like a universal thing now. Yeah. Because like, you know, most cell phones, they take amazing pictures. I know. My goodness. Like these commercials with like, this was shot on the iPhone 11. I'm just like, this is amazing. What? It's yeah. Great. I mean, it, composition has a lot to do with, with everything. Like, I mean, if you have a good eye and composition, like, so I guess that's where, you know, way back in the day, like, I guess I had an okay eye. So people kept booking me <laughs> even with like the, like the lowest of the low grade camera. Yeah. Like it doesn't always matter about the gear. Yeah. It matters about the artist. Like there's some even things people do with like, there was one person who shot something like completely on an iPhone and just the way that they composed it and edited it still looked better than some people with the nicest gear. So yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's crazy. So uh, one yeah. of the favorite things about photography is that the most important uh, gear in your bag is the six inches behind the camera. It's yeah, your brain, for sure. So. And again, the, the taking the time to compose it to, you know, wait just a few more seconds and bam snap that when they're you know giving you real laughs or when like you know everybody else is looking this way you're shooting that like last teardrop there you know or something that you're yeah you being the artist are the ones who because you could have like I said the nicest stuff out there but if there's no person behind it getting the right moment or the composition doesn't matter you could have all the cha-ching in the world for gear, but if you're not that person who's got the passion behind it, then it's not going to make you feel anything, you know? It's absolutely true. Yeah. And uh, going back to, like, your comments about, like, interpersonal connections, mm -hmm. uh, I've actually had clients, like, hire me, you know, not really because I was, like, the best photographer, but, yeah. but they basically said, like, we just really click with you. Yeah, for and, sure. Like, we, we thought that we would get along really well with you. Yeah, and you just make day. us feel relieved and, like, you know, encouraged and so, like, I feel so much m more stress-free when I'm just around you because yeah you've made us feel so happy and you know and that's really where you know once again the word of mouth thing people really will book you or say book you it sounds so yeah. they will really like remember you and they'll tell their friends they'll they'll tell their family and they're like man they were just so personal they were so um, eager to please us and make us feel like a hundred million dollars on our wedding day mm -hmm. like that really sells you more than just the image itself too. Like people yeah. have to believe in you right. and believe in themselves yeah. because you've encouraged them and let them know, Hey, no, like we're gonna, we're gonna be okay. Like this big box in front of my face is it's just still me behind. It's fine. Just relax. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. think what really sets like photographers apart in the market is, um, when clients realize that you actually like give a damn about them. Yeah, absolutely. Care. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And that's like, I mean, you may touch on it later, but like, this is why I love, film so much if we're gonna go ahead and just hop there because I could talk about this for over hours um that I is the same but I know you love film too but like it really does make you like slow down and really connect with your client because you're having to really think about that shot because it's like you want to sit here and make sure that you compose it and you shoot it well because that's like a negative and it's like you know it's it's a click and it's permanent almost <laughs> because it's not it's just click, 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 click with digital. But like when you're able to sit there and just talk and compose a shot and you're able to like connect with your client at the same time and you're like, oh, and yes. Okay. And then you're moving on. So you're not sitting here just like, you're able to really connect and just slow down and, and talk to them instead of just being like, okay, now we're going to go here and we're going to pose this and we're going to do this and this and this. Yeah. So yeah, that's, actually, that's actually something I really admire about you because like I, I love film to death. And I've actually tried shooting like hybrid weddings before, mm. and it's just too much. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot. And for me, like, you know, um, I have to be like really efficient on the job. Oh, yeah. So, digital like, is still like king, too. Don't get me wrong. Like, I literally have a little note in here. I'm just like, no, I need digital for it. Can It has to sometimes be my only medium that day, too, when it's like super dark out, when, you know, things get crazy with timelines, or reception lighting is low, or just. It's just a rainy day, you know, and there's like no light or you're going to get your film wet. Um, but like if given the opportunity, I love to just push myself because, again, I've been shooting this. I've been shooting weddings for nine years now. Go, now it's 2020, mm -hmm. nine years. And I'm like, 
it just made me excited again to use a medium that was so timeless and so beautiful like another art form for me and like it's like a watercolor versus like an acrylic is what I tell people I'm like think of like digital as like the acrylic it's still a beautiful medium but then like there's watercolor like you know you're still using the beautiful medium but it's like it just made me excited again about about photography when I could be digital all day but it, it is it's still difficult I have two three bodies on me sometimes I tell people I'm like get ready I'm gonna show up like a freaking nature on your wedding day <laughs> I've got three cameras on me two of them are film and one's digital and they're like what like the video stuff I was like no like that stuff that our parents use and our grandparents use like I'm gonna be using that and they're like wow that's so like innovative I'm like no it's really not it's just that our you know our industry has gone so digital and that's why I really wanted to shoot it too because I'm like I want to be different like I've and I want to do it for me like yeah. too it just makes me happy and excited again just like you did your personal work going out to to Vegas and then going and shooting a landscape like yeah. film is that for me now yeah. but I still can shoot it personal work and for my clients too you know so and it's, it's really just such a joy to shoot film because mm -hmm. like you're saying it slows you down and just the process of like doing that yeah is it's just it's therapeutic almost. it really is that's exactly right for like, sure you know, especially like when I was shooting film for like personal reasons like it was just so nice to just you know really sit down and compose the shot yeah and just you know take your time and I, I would develop the film myself so, and see and that's I commend you for that because I kind of I've seen people do it and I'm just yeah. like no I'm gonna send this off to my lab up in Oregon they got me they get me they yeah. they're professionals just like I would hire a professional mechanic to shoot to do things on my car I'm gonna hire my professional lab to develop and um you know scan in my my film yeah. so it's, it's not a bad idea because i've had a few yeah. like oopses in, in the developing process sure and yeah lost, and, you know, lost roles before oh that was that, heartbreak that heartbreak really yeah I would. Like, there's no greater pain in photography than like shooting all day developing your role of film and then realizing that you screwed up oh no and yeah. you, you pull it out of the developing tank and there's like just nothing on oh it. no and you're just like did i leave the lens cap on what did i do <laughs> no i know i shot this i know this happened yeah no that's 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 heartbreaking. And that's why I'm like, again, have mad respect and kudos and brownie points to the people who can do and develop and all that stuff. I'm like, I've seen it done. And I'm like, and this is, once again, you pay the professional people too to do the things that I know I'm not um, going to take the time and, and, and risk that because mm -hmm. I'm getting people people's memories there too I mean I'm shooting dig I'm shooting both and I'll have a second usually too to be capturing those moments with me because it's just like a you know an insurance a safeguard kind of thing but um when you're the only person I'd be shooting probably mostly digital that day no joke so, so and I just be like okay and we're already here so just one for the film like so just one let me tell you a secret fantasy of mine for photography um a dream of mine is to take a single 35 millimeter camera mm -hmm. with like seven or eight rolls of tri-x and black and white oh, yeah. and just shoot a wedding that would be just awesome. Black and white. I've seen that happen. Like yeah. people have talked about it. It's not um, your fantasy can be a reality yeah. for the photography. <laughs> like people really do that. Um, it would be such a beautiful. Like I've shot Triax at a reception actually. It is the bomb. It's really bomb. cool. And it's um, at four like four hundred yeah. at a reception. And um, I know I'm like I don't know. If this is talking too much, too much numbers right now for some friends. But I mean. 400, I mean, you know, the ISO, like, even at a reception, Triax, like, at 400, yeah. shot at 400, not yeah. at 200, not mm -hmm. giving it more like, it yeah. still did, like, really well. It is, and so, yeah. I, it I, could, I, it could happen. I've you could do it. I've actually pushed Triax to, like, uh, 3,200 before. Really? Yeah. Okay, you're giving me, like, ideas to try it. I just haven't bought any in a minute, because I love color film, just because yeah. I love I like color and I can convert it black and white. It's not the same, of course, so I know that, but it can, for my clients, they can be like, can you make this color? And I'd be like, no, not for the black. If it was true, you know, tri -X or yeah. Delta Oh yeah, Delta 3200, you know, yeah, that's a cool film. Yeah, I've seen, all, yeah. and Ilford is a really nice one too, but yeah. the tri -X is the only one I've tried that I really, yeah. the contrast on it is it's beautiful. Great. It just has a character that you can't yeah. find anywhere else. Absolutely. And if you find the right developer and like shoot it at 3200, like mm -hmm. the grain is beautiful. Yeah. It's not distracting at all. No, I love me some grain. Like that's why I love, I mean, like I said, I shoot medium format and 35 millimeter on I a wedding that. day. Yeah. And so. We do <laughs> 645, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I have a Mamiya 645 and then a Nikon F100. Beautiful. And then I shoot with Fuji 400H. 
um, rated at 200. Classic. Like yeah. Jose Villa. Shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, little Jose. Like everybody wants to be like Jose. That's a, a little my note too. I was like, yeah. I loved it. I loved whenever I was on Pinterest and all the things when I was looking around, I would be so drawn to this look and this yeah. color and this, you know, style. And I'm like, why can't I get that? And why can't it, my why can't my stuff look like that? And then I realized, oh, because it's a completely different meeting. It's a watercolor versus an acrylic. Yeah. Like there's no getting there until you actually shoot it. And then you're like, oh, this is a difference. So, um, yeah, I have both because I'm like, one gets only 16 exposures per roll and yeah. then cha-ching. <laughs> and I'm like, this is $5 a click, click. And then my 35 millimeter, I'll just go out of town. I'm like, cause it's only like $3 a click. Like it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, no, I love, like I guess I have both because I'm like, when I'm in between, I can be having two and then here's the digital over here. And we're just, you know, going crazy with the digital, but, um, and that yeah. That Fujifilm stock is incredible because I've seen people do just the dumbest stuff with it. Really? Like they'll, they'll overexpose it by like four to five stops. Oh, yeah. And it just holds it's, the highlights. Oh, my gosh. It lo it's light hungry. Yeah. Like, it's so light hungry. That's what I've been, that's what I've heard someone refer to it. I was like, that's, a, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but like, Portra loves light too, but yeah. you can shoot it at box speed and get great stuff. Oh, yeah. And really low light stuff. At 400, I mean, that's what it's yeah, meant Kodak, for. But, uh, Kodak uh, 400 is, is kind of weird because, like, you can mess up your exposure by two stops either way, and it looks perfect. I know, I know. What's funny is, okay, recently I've been loving me some um, Kodak. It's from Walgreens. Crap. What is it called? So sorry. Is it uh, the gold at, stuff? Yeah, Kodak Gold. Yeah, Kodak Gold, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I love it. I shot some, you know, several sessions for engagements and little personal work here and there, and I've shot it on a wedding day, too, but, like, I, ex I expose it at, um, or rate it at 200 too, even though it's Kodak 400, mm -hmm. I still rate it at 200 to give it a little more light yeah. and it just, it shines even at two. I mean, it can do, it can do everything that, really that Portrait is. and Kodak can do. Okay. That, so we, we can nerd out about film photography. Yeah, I know. Obviously that's why I'm like, okay, right. look. But uh, let's kind of jump to your business. Yeah. So like, um, so tell me about your business and like, you know, who are you as a wedding photographer? Like, how would you describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as a fine art photographer. That sounds so cliche. And what, what does that mean? Exactly? So I actually like, okay, I actually defined the word fine art because I was like, it gets thrown around a lot. Yeah, it does. And, um, and I don't just say it because I like want to be like bad and bougie and like yeah. use the word fine <laughs> art and just be like, pay me more because I am taking like the time and, and the, you know, it takes a different... I don't say talent, but just like yeah. when you shoot that, like you got to know that you, you nailed that exposure. Yeah. Like your setting is right. definitely fine art. Yeah. I don't call myself fine Thank you. Talent. Well, you're sweet. Well, here's here's what I said. Here's what I defined it as because I was like, I wanna, I'm going to get thrown around so much. I was like, what does it actually mean? So um, define fine art is um, a visual art consi considered to have been created primarily for aesthetic and intellectual purposes and judged for its beauty and meaningfulness. Yeah. So... A pr like intellectual purposes sound so like I said bougie yeah. but like meaningfulness is what really stood out to me for this mm -hmm. because it's like yeah you're you're taking your time you're composing that shot you're making sure you know you've properly exposed your this and you've used your app you know you're doing your aperture you're doing this when you snap that photo it wasn't like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. It's like, no, everything was like done with intentionality for yeah. that for that photo. Just like how a painter paints something with intentionality, um, you're composing something or even you're styling something to and take it. And it's not like just a, oops, yeah. oops, oops. The photo oops. is the realization of your vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even like I said, with people, like I'm waiting for in between moments. So like, even if they're just like walking and like smiling, laughing at each other, I'm just like, y'all just take your, take your moment over there, like talk, enjoy yourself. And I'm just capturing like that meaningful moment. Like that's what's happening right in front of me mm -hmm. right now. And, you know, again, I'm not just being like, and okay, yeah, now go over here and do this. And it's, it's like trying to be very intentional with it. So I think that's, I think that was like my biggest thing. I was like, if I can at least get some kind of definition with it, yeah. I'm not just like, throwing it on there so that it's yeah. well, I think sounding. Well, I can define it like, um, uh, helps you like not make it a label for yourself yeah it's, it's not like what you call yourself it's what you are oh thank you yeah. i appreciate that it's like you you, you don't just call yourself a fine, a fine art photographer you are a fine art photographer <sighs> thanks <laughs> i appreciate that because um again it, it does get thrown a lot around yeah. a lot but um 
but like, again, it's just, like anyone can assume the label, but not, not everybody can like you know walk the walk. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, and by having three cameras on me, I'm like, no, I look like a freak of nature. But I'm like, all these cameras have purposes. They exactly. all do different things, and they all like I have a light meter on my neck too. I'm like, no, I've got like four different things around my neck, mm -hmm. and like I don't have a video camera too. But I'm like, shoot, if I had a video camera, that's why I'm like, I leave that that to a whole that's a whole yeah. other animal. I'm like, no, when I say film, I'm like, no, like the stuff you put in that camera. You roll it in there. You're yeah. So it's just it's more intentionality, I think, and more than anything is what I think I like to. So yeah. Uh, when did you when did you realize that that's kind of like how you wanted to like promote yourself as a photographer? Yeah, and I think think going back to like I talked about um, I realized you know talking about Jose Villa or talking about you know he's like the I feel like the only authority not the only there's a lot of great photographers who do film but like. When I went to be inspired by other work, and not like now I can feel better about being like, I can be inspired by my own stuff and not try to like play the comparison game like mm -hmm. we're all guilty of. Mm -hmm. But um, just being inspired by other people, when I realized that that was a look that I was trying so hard to get and couldn't, mm -hmm. I had to realize, okay, this is why I want to use this medium. Um, that's why I shot film. I was like, if I love it so much, why wouldn't I use that for my clients? Why wouldn't I do that for myself? Yeah. It's more for it's for them and for me. Right. Like, it makes me excited again yeah. and in turn makes me a better photographer for my clients. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to be happy that I'm enjoying what I'm doing because they're feeling like they're truly getting someone who is so passionate about what they're doing and that's really what I want to leave them feeling like too like wow she really loves what she really loves us she really loves what she's doing she's not just doing this to make the to pay the bills you yeah, know your authenticity shows through your work thank you thank you yeah. Jacob I appreciate that and that's such a that's such a very like fine line because like mm -hmm. I've met so many photographers who said um, I shoot weddings, but I hate them. Yeah, and yeah. I'll only shoot a wedding if you, if you can meet my price. And that's really the only yeah. reason that they do it. Yeah, I get And I, you know, because you got to love people. Oh, you got to yeah. love people. Yeah. Um, and again, be their therapist on that day too, you uh -huh. know. And I, because I love, I love weddings. I love elopements. I love engagements. I love families. I love just being a part of a special person's day. Like I literally have a note here where I'm like, I love it when I leave a wedding and someone goes, wow, you're going to be our forever photographer. Yeah. Like that right there is the biggest compliment I could ever get because it's like, literally they want me to be with them on every phenomenal special day of their life because yeah. I made them feel so great. And they really enjoyed like the whole process and they love their images afterwards too because they were loved the entire time. You know yeah, what I mean? I can't tell you how many so, of my clients have become my friends. Yeah, like, same. For, like really. Same. I know. I got a, I got a um, letter in the mail just two days ago from clients I shot and like we took a selfie together or like with a, with my real camera because my second shooter, second shooter shot a picture of a shooter. That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> my second shooter. I'm going to call him that for now. Shooter. <laughs> um, they took a picture for us and like, they printed it out for me and sent it in the mail and like with a nice little thank you note from yeah. their what like with their wedding photos and I was like, Isn't wow, the that's the best. It yeah. really is. So it's like, you know, people want to be like, don't you get so many like, you know, girls that are just crazy or, you know, and I'm like, no, I really don't. I sit here and say, I have people who may be very particular about their things that they like, but guess what? They have the right to be particular about what they want. Oh, like yeah. it's, it's a good thing to be particular. Like, I mean, A is their wedding and yeah. you, that's your client. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So people were like, I can't believe you just, you love to be in this stressful thing. I'm like, no, like this actually gives me like life because I'm literally being with people on a, such a great, wonderful day. Like, I don't know. It's just my my Enneagram 2 coming out. I'm like, I need to be needed and love to be loved. And I love to love on other people and just uh, show I them. I the same way too. It's yeah. just like, you know, it's, it is stressful, but like, I love it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I almost kind of like get off on it. I know. It's, 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 like, a, yeah. it's a very like, like adrenaline. I feel like a, I feel like a rock star. Like, I know. Like, I know. Same. I mean, it's, it's like you leave that day and you're like, um, did that really just happen? Like you really do have like yeah. a, um, it's like a runner's form. high, but yeah. like, it's like a photographer high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. And that's how you know you need to be doing what you're doing. Like I've had bridesmaids and family members of, you know, the bride and go just come up to me timeless times being like, you need to keep doing what you're doing. Like yeah. you are so awesome at what you do. You've made us feel so comfortable today. You've really made us all laugh. Like you've made us feel just the best today. So keep pursuing this, continue to do this, please. Like for, for the sake of anybody else, please keep doing this. So that makes me feel like 
when the bad days are like, if things are a little stressful, I'm like, but you know what? It's worth it. hundred percent. Always worth it. When you get people come up and just truly be happy with how you made them feel that day. So I, I totally agree. Yeah. Well, let's change gears a little bit and talk yeah. about marketing. Yeah. So like, you know, what is your experience with like, you know, marketing in general? Because like, you come yeah. from a science background. Yeah. And you kind of like, you know, went off into like uh, the art field. Yeah. So like, what was your experience with like getting into like a business aspect? What was Because like, I was like lost. Oh, yeah. I was lost too. And I think, you know, when I started, Facebook was king yeah. um, to your Facebook page and um, you just constantly posted on your Facebook page and you shared it on your personal page. Yeah. And, um, and, I, and so I started there and I mean, cause everybody was yeah. there. Um, and then that now was like the golden age it was Facebook. great. And like, you didn't have to pay for ads yeah. <laughs> or, you know, to, to reach your market or to reach your people. You could just Do you literally, how much I paid for ads last month. On I, Facebook? there's no telling. I paid four hundred and twenty dollars. That on doesn't ads. surprise me. And no. it's worth it. Is it? I think well, it good. Is. Well, that is something I've. So I've done a lot of. Okay, paid for things. I've paid yeah. for being in blogs. I've to be on like you know a preferred blog. I've paid for magazine um, ads. I've paid for, I mean, several magazines ads. But like, uh-huh. but print is, it's it's great to be in print. Yeah. It's wonderful. I have no no regrets on that. But. It's digital age. I mean, people want to be able to like click on that link immediately and see your entire portfolio or see your, you know, Instagram and go to your link and see themselves right then and there, not um, have to wait for a publication. It's just, it's just, it's just part of the. It's about speed and convenience. Yes, it is. And it that's, is. That's what people want. And if you can't deliver on that, you're kind of like falling behind. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I still market like mostly for me personally. So back in the day, it was Facebook, but still, even now, Instagram is really where the majority of my leads come from if they're not from word of mouth it's That's from instagram amazing. it's amazing because like it is such a still a free platform yeah. but i mean you still can pay for ads if you you know need to and i i will pay for ads usually this time of year especially because it's um engagement it's season, season yeah. yeah um engagement season is some people may not know is <laughs> the time between like thanksgiving and valentine's day because yeah. everybody's with their friends and family around the holidays and it's just a very like magical time of the year so people Get engaged during the holidays. Do you know so. what kids call these year these days? They call uh, the gold. No, they call it cuffing season. Cuffing, so because <laughs> they like, put handcuffs on their, that's their a, boyfriends and girlfriends. Oh my goodness! Well, like then you then they really don't need to be getting married anytime soon. <laughs> that's what they're calling it because that's not um, what it's supposed to be about. So anyway, I've actually used that that phrase in advertising before. The cuffing, yeah, cuffing season, season, not yeah. not engagement season, but cuffing, cuffing season. season. Okay, yeah. I've learned something today. I'm hit. Kids. That's, that's like, yeah. This, I'm a Visco girl. Oh, I usually have I usually have my scrunchie on, but today I don't have my scrunchie. Yeah, the Visco girl thing and um, save the turtles and my metal straws oh and all that stuff. Gosh. Yes, I know. And I'm like, Instagram is where people find me, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not really a Visco girl. I'm just, um, I know what they are, but I don't know. I'm not one. <laughs> um, but yeah, like literally, that's, I mean, I post like every day on social, uh, every day on Instagram. Yeah. Um, sometimes three times a day, yeah. Um, just to stay relevant in the feed. And then that sounds so like it's it's a lot of work. And I like sit here and curate my feed and try to really like that sounds crazy, but I'm like that's now work. And yeah. you know when you're not doing a bunch of other stuff, I like I'll plan out my feed just so people see it. And when they look at it, they like see it and immediately like okay, she's a wedding photographer. Yeah. Like that's that's what she does. Yeah. You know. So I totally get that because like. For this uh, this year, I've actually made a commitment to post like at, at least five pieces of social media on every platform that I have. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm I need to be better. I actually need to be better about Pinterest. I've pinned a lot today too. Oh yeah, I gotta catch up on that mm-hmm. for real. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it ranks on Google. It really it does. does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I need to be better about blogging too. But truly, where I, I mean, girls are scrolling. I say girls because those are our that's my client. Yeah. Um, brides are scrolling on Instagram, and so if they see me at least once out of the three times I posted that yeah. day, then that's where I need to be. So, and they like it more too because I like it more. It's no, there's no drama with the Facebook now. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's political and just a lot of stupid um, drama. I will say on Facebook, mm-hmm. and so Instagram makes it a little less drama free, and they can literally just come there to enjoy pretty images and move on with their day, you know? So and have you heard about like the features that they're going to roll out for Instagram? Soon? Um, the like no likes. likes. Yeah. yeah. Which I do. 
agree with. Yeah. Um, it's because I think as a business, so I have a business tab as my, you know, Instagram. Um, so you can you can still see your analytics there and see how many people view and and like it yourself. But it's so good for like these mental health things that people don't need to be seeing the likes. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm with it's it 100. percent It is. Yeah. It can be. And I really. That's why I'm like, I just post the pretty things and I put the pretty quotes under it and I just move on with my day and yeah. not have to make people stress and be worried about likes. Because there are people who still, I mean, this is going to say people, there are photographers who will buy the likes still and, and, and businesses in general because they want the swipe up feature. And I get yeah. that for like, you know, um, buying online things and, and yeah. having courses or things like that. Like I'm not... Um, I'm not dissing on dissing. See, we're cool kids. Yeah. The hip. <laughs> I was like, what's the word I'm looking for? Diss. I'm not um, disrespecting that decision that they made for their business. But I personally, I'm like, I'm not in that rat race. I just want to. I just want to serve my clients well, yeah. and um, that's just my personal thing. So the lights going away. That's cool for me because that makes it, like I said, less stressful for a lot of people in their mental health things. So I'm all about it. I'm, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So we're kind of coming down the home stretch. So yeah. like, uh, in the last like in a few minutes, yeah. let's talk about the current state of the wedding industry. Okay. And like, what are your thoughts on that? The current state, like, okay. Like, what, like what's a trend that you've noticed? Like some challenges yeah. that you face? So trends and challenges. That's good. So I had a trend in here and challenges. I also want to, um, challenges. So the trends I've been seeing is that people are getting married later in their life. Mm, it's true. Um, yeah. They're establishing their careers. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, they're mid to upper 20s, you know, lower 30s, even more. Yeah. Um, so they're establishing their careers. They're not um, worried about, you know, all that till later in their life. Yeah. And it also, it's great because... I like, I like that type of client. That's not like my ideal client. I, I mean, my ideal client is someone who trusts me and who just loves my work. I mean, that's literally what I put in here. I was like, whoever loves me, they're my ideal client. <laughs> but um, it makes it, it means, I feel like they have a more sophisticated um, look and they really know who they are. So yeah. in turn, they're not going and being like, hey, mom, hey, dad, um, let's book the same exact things that you wanted or let's do everything that you guys want because they want what they are wanting and in turn that makes it so much nicer for me because I can literally turn to them and be like what do you guys like and they already know what they like and want yeah. because they're already you know and they're mid they know who they are because they're at over 25 maybe and they they're like no I know who I am as a, as a person as an individual now and that just makes it a lot easier for them to book things and they just like know what they want yeah that's so uh, true because like I've, I've yeah. like the younger clients that I run into, like a lot of times, they're they're heavily pressured by their sure. family to do things sure. a certain way. Absolutely, because you know, or even their friends. Yeah. Oh well, my sorority girls did it this way, so I want to do this. Or they book a lot of the same people that their friends do to compete with that. Like I said, the rat race. And, oh yeah, and that's not always it's like, like keeping up with the Johnsons. Like, it yeah. is, and so, but when they're a little bit older in life, um, I don't say older like that. I mean, they're more sophisticated in their taste. That's how I want to like portray this. <laughs> Those clients, like they really are more sophisticated and truly know who they are and what they want, and it makes my job easier. And I've also seen that like couples who are a little bit more sophisticated in their tastes have more intimate guest lists too. Yeah. And I love that because I can sit here and you know really get all those intimate moments throughout the day because it's not like I'm catering. And like I'm not saying that a big guest list is bad. If you want to have 500 people that you mm -hmm. love, have them there. But if you have like 150 or less. It makes, I just have seen that as a trend of people are having fewer people there and they can in turn make it more of like a home event or like a, a we've, we've rented like loungewear or like tape, like seating so that, you know, you guys can enjoy our wedding and it'd be like more of a relaxed thing. You're here to celebrate with us. We're not here to put a show on. Yeah, to, it's, it's to, much to more show. Yeah, it is. It's so like I said, going back to the meaningfulness, I'm like that truly like resonated with me. I was like, one of my clients know what they want it makes it so much easier for me and to me to cater to those trends because it's like it's what I love already like small intimate things with people who know what they like yeah, yeah. and like you know family um, is family but when you haven't talked to like you know Aunt Becky in like 20 years yeah you know. and you haven't talked to her yeah and you just have to invite her out of obligation and out of like it's the right it's the southern thing to do because yeah. we're here now in, in Alabama yeah. but like that's definitely a southern thing it is and um it just it makes it 
I don't know, it just makes them more of their own when they've invited who they want because they really um, support and encourage this marriage versus just because they, you know, Aunt, Uncle, Uncle Bob's neighbor down the street, oh, because we, like, play in their yard one time, we have to invite them. You know, you don't, you don't. So, yeah. Um, and then challenges. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess just keeping up with... All the changing, I guess, marketing things um, would be the only challenge trends. Um, yeah. I feel like, like that's just change so fast. Yeah, they and do. You, you have to stay on top. For sure, and like you know, I can, like I said, still. I mean, even if I post on Instagram this amount of time a day, and just because that's working for me now, doesn't mean I don't need to still like stay relevant with the Pinterest and stay relevant with. Um, I'm on TikTok. I am too. I, okay, but not like You're on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. What? You, what? you gotta give me your. Gotta I, give will. Me I will. I will. I'm. I'm only there for the funny, so I'm not there to like. <laughs> I haven't posted anything, but it is. I've been on TikTok since James Spann told me that he's yeah, on TikTok. Yes, James Spann's on TikTok. I saw him at a luncheon recently. I've not seen him on TikTok yet. You, it's the same. His handle is the same as his Instagram. Yeah. James Fan got me on TikTok. I was like, if James Fan's on there, I got to be on TikTok. Yeah. So it's hilarious. No, I knew you have to stay relevant on all the things. And again, you know, we can laugh about being hit with the kids, but it's just, I want to be able to serve people everywhere. And that's where, you know, like I said, going back to talking about James Fan, yeah. he was like, if I can reach people even on there and like save their lives one day because of like weather situations, mm -hmm. then like, I'm going to be on there. And I was like, wow, that's really his, like, that's his why. And I was like, for my why, it needs to be because, oh, if they found me on there and they really enjoy my work and I can serve them in a good way, then I need to be on that platform just yeah. so they can, you know, be, so I can be relevant to wherever they are and meet that, that, uh, in, that media, that social media needs. So I'm literally on TikTok because like, I, I honestly believe that it's like the next like Facebook. Oh yeah. yeah. It's and amazing. Just, like, I just crossed a thousand followers. I saw that. I've only been on TikTok for like four months. That's awesome. It took me like almost two years to, 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 to do that on, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I will say back in the day, and we're wrapping up and stuff back in the day when Facebook was king and stuff like we would, I mean, my business partner and I, we would like do giveaways and be like, yeah. like and follow our page. And I know a lot of people still do that, like and follow, like and I follow. Yeah. yeah, and it and it gives you like that number. But then if you're like, as long as those numbers become eventually like dollars or to to your business, yeah. if we're talking about business stuff, you and then even like I said, those numbers mean nothing if they're like ten thousand fake people and you're not even re reaching people that you yeah. could actually like convert to a client or convert to like a word of mouth client. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. So closing thoughts, like if you could say anything to the audience right now, what would you say? Go get some film, <laughs> go find a 35 millimeter film camera and just enjoy it. Have fun. Um, I know. I mean, I say that cause we could talk about film forever, but, um, um, I would say follow your dreams, your passions. Don't be scared like we talked about. Don't be scared to follow something that's not society's um, idea of what successful is. Because I feel like as long as you're loving what you're doing and you're, you know, feeding yourself every night, then you're being successful and, like, you're following your dreams. So, um, and, you know, do something that brings you joy, brings you, you know, spark joy um, because if I didn't do that I might be in the miserable position of working at a clinic that I absolutely hated or some hospital somewhere and having no flexibility to come and go and do as I please because I'm you know shooting art and taking photos of people and instead I'd be like nope sorry I can't do that because I got to be at the uh, office at 6 a.m. sharp tomorrow until you know, whenever, and it's just, it's such an amazing thing that the Lord's done to give me so much freedom in my, in my passion, in my art, and it just, it never ceases to amaze me that He always provides. He really does. So, follow your dreams. Don't let, don't let people bring you down and do what you, your heart tells you to do. I totally agree. Julie, thank you so You're much welcome. for stopping by. This You're has welcome. been Sparking Fire with Jacob with Jane D Photography. Thanks for coming by for the inaugural episode. I will see you next week.